Welcome to RC Foam Fighters Bullet Plane Build Part 4. The plane is pretty much ready to take out for some test flying, but before we do that, I want to go over some of the pre flight stuff. Okay, let's do some uh, static testing. I've got three props that I'm going to try to use here, um, see what kind of power we're getting out of them. There's a 5.1 by 4.5, a 6 by 5.5, and, and a 6 by 4 prop. Um, we're going to go ahead and test the first one. It's going to be the 6x4 by, six by prop. Um, I usually like to walk it up not too fast, just so I don't get a spike at the beginning. After that, I'll do a spike just to see what it peaks out at. Alright, so here we go. Alright, now it's going to scroll through the peaks over here. Okay, now I'm just going to give it a quick spike to see if it goes any higher than that. Usually on a spike you'll get higher numbers. Okay, one other thing that I like to do before I take it out for a maiden flight is I want to make sure that it has enough power to go vertical. So we do a vertical test and basically what I do is I hold the plane in the vertical position and just use my, the palm of my hand to hold it here and then bring the throttle up and if it holds itself up and it feels like it's pushing, everything's good. So we're going to go ahead and test that right now. Alright, the plane definitely has enough power to go vertical. As you see, it was just floating there. Um, you want to be very careful when you do this because a prop could get you, so you want to make sure that it's away from your body. And if you do if you start trying to do this, just make sure to be safe. What I want to do next is go over some of the features that I was talking about. In the, uh, in the last video that I think are going to make this plane faster. Um, aside from the sleek design of the body and the thinness of the wing, um, there are some other features that should help it in the speed department. Um, mainly the prop being out in the open with nothing behind it and pretty much hardly anything in front of it. This helps airflow to the prop which also helps to create more thrust when you have half of the body behind the prop they have to blow through or over it and you lose a lot of the power that way that's why the motor on this plane is sitting all the way up the very back and it's not really close to the wing either so clean air can get to the prop very easily um, the other one of the other features main features on the plane is the KF airfoil um, I have not experimented with this yet this is the very first plane I've built with a KF airfoil. Okay, everybody, you hope you're ready for the maiden flight. Cause here it goes. It's about it's under 30 degrees out here, but we're gonna go ahead and fly it anyway. We got lucky; it didn't snow. So here it goes, man. Oh! Oh! oh. All right. Uh, you seen the first one? It went into the ground. It didn't do any real damage. So I went ahead and scooted the CG a little bit farther forward and let's try it again. Here goes. There you go, that looks a lot better. That's bad. Just take it easy. Can I do this? Yeah. Get that right. Oh, I lost it. Alright, I need to bring it in because I gotta adjust. Alright, we're getting closer. Getting closer, man. Getting closer. Alright, and getting ready for uh, day two of uh, testing. I've changed a few things on the plane. Uh, the main one is I moved the center of gravity even farther forward 
Um, I started off at five and a quarter inches back from this area is where it was originally, which was towards the back of where the servos are. Um, yesterday's second flight, I was able to move it forward a quarter of an inch. Um, it got it flying a lot better. Um, today I've already got it scooted forward even a quarter inch more, so now I've got the center of gravity at four and three quarter inches back from this point of the plane, which is towards the front of the servo. Um, I also had a little bit of problems with the plane's uh, elevators didn't seem to have enough control so I moved the the servo control horn bracket down one hole to get a little bit more throw out of the elevrons. Um, other than that I had to add a little bit of weight into the nose to get the center of gravity where it is. I added a half an ounce to the very nose inside and we're gonna go ahead and take this out again today and see if it flies better and with any luck I'll be able to try and get some speeds out of it with our new radar gun. Alright, we're back for day two of uh, testing. Let's see how it flies. Oh. Oh. say it's going good because <laughs> if you do you'll crash all right that didn't go too well let's go ahead and take a look at the carnage oh yeah pieces everywhere there's one of the stabilizers oh yeah time for a rebuild I think man there's pieces everywhere Sorry guys, I guess you're going to have to wait a little longer until I can rebuild it to get some actual numbers. Alright, we're back down in the basement workshop. Um, time to do a little bit of damage assessment, see how things are. Looks like the battery survived okay. Receiver looks good. Speed controller looks alright. Pretty much looks like all the equipment is okay to reuse for the rebuild. Um, doesn't really look as bad as it really looks. Basically it looks like I just need to replace the main fuselage piece. The wing and the stabilizers look like they're still in pretty good shape. So it's not as bad as it looks. Hopefully I'll be able to get this back together for this weekend because the weather is supposed to be really nice. So I guess I better get started on rebuilding it. Hey everybody, before we leave this portion of the series I wanted to go ahead and answer a question I'm sure I'm going to get in the comments and that's uh, what happened out there? Why the plane crash? Um, well I was asking myself that very question so I watched the flight videos over and over again to try and get an idea of what happened and it kind of dawned on me. I just got too caught up in my excitement and my anxiety to get out there to fly the plane that I kind of did things a little bit differently than what I normally do. Um, usually when I get out and do some test flying I want to just make minor changes to the plane after each flight to see what you know affects it. Um, this time I kind of did a little bit too much in between flights and well you saw what happened the plane went down. Um, just remember the number one rule when you're test flying make minor modifications to the plane and don't do more than one thing because if you do you won't know which one is working and which one isn't. Um, that's pretty much all I'm going to say on that other than the fact that also I am still considering myself a novice pilot. I'm sure that had a lot to do with it as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and finish the plane up for this weekend because the weather's supposed to be nice so hopefully I'll be able to get some more flight video out. Um, if not be sure to come back anyway because I'll have something posted and in the meantime Make sure to check out Paul's new uh, review video on our brand new radar gun. There's some pretty crazy flying in there too, so check it out. I'll put a link in the sidebar over here, so be sure to check it out. This is Frank with RC Foam Fighters. See you again next time. Bye.